Tina from Kit Guru. Uh, those of you that are regular viewers have probably already seen a version of this video that went live on Saturday. Uh, that was actually an early version of the final review and it did contain uh, several errors. Uh, with the help of CyberPower though, we have fixed the hardware configuration issue that did cause uh, misleading buy information. Uh, so now I'm gonna move on to my review of the Hyperliquid GTX from CyberPower that I've got sat on my desk behind me here. So it's not my normal white PC. So uh, this is obviously a liquid cooled PC. Um, it arrived to me on a pallet, which I think is probably the best way to transport a PC that does have liquid cooling. It meant that it arrived nice and safe and sound. The PC itself did come in a big cardboard box, and then you also get another box on there, and that's got the uh, motherboard box, and that contains all the manuals and cables for the power supply and things. So uh, this PC, it does retail for £2,649. So it is definitely uh, up there in price. It has got some very high-end components that do justify that price. The processor is an i7-8700K that comes overclocked from CyberPower at 4.8 gigahertz uh, on all cores. It's also got a GTX 1080 Ti from MSI. The motherboard is also from MSI. It's the Z370 Pro Gaming Carbon motherboard. And then the RAM, it's got 16 gigabytes of Adata's D80 Spectrix uh, water-cooled RAM, and that's running at 3,600 megahertz. The storage comes in the form of a Samsung 970 Evo M.2 SSD, and it's also got a two terabyte hard drive from Seagate. It's powered by a Corsair RM750X power supply and it's all seated in the Corsair 570X case. It's a little bit different to my one. This is the mirrored edition. So I have actually taken off the side panel here uh, because it does reflect quite badly back onto the camera. Like the clue is in the name is the mirrored edition. So it is very reflective. Um, the OS is also pre-installed. You get Windows 10 Home included in the price. So yeah, £2,649 uh, is definitely up there in price. Uh, you do pay about a 10-20% markup. I did price up all the sort of components individually, but I don't actually think that that's too bad uh, considering that this PC does have hardline liquid cooling. So that does take a little bit of extra time and effort uh, for CyberPower to put it all together. And it does come... Uh, pre-built to you just got to sort of like set it up and then it's ready to go basically uh, so I do definitely think it's worth sort of paying the extra premium uh, for someone to build it for you um, and uh, do the sort of overclock and things I don't think it is too overpriced for a pre-built PC so aesthetically I think this PC does look absolutely fantastic like I said it has got the Corsair 570X uh, mirrored edition case um, it is a very beautiful looking case it's got this sort of like uh, like I said like mirror finish so it's also slightly darker tinted as well which I think does quite a good job of sort of hiding the cables around the back that also is made out of glass uh, the case itself has like plenty of RGB lighting going on as well. Uh, so you get do actually get a controller with it. So you can control the lighting inside the case. There's two LED strips, one across the top and one across the side. And they work alongside the RGB lighting that's actually in the water cooling. So the reservoir, the GPU pump and the CPU pump all have their own RGB lighting. Uh, there's plenty of different colours to sort of scroll between. Uh, on the uh, front of the case, it's got three SP120 fans. They come as default with the Corsair 570X. Uh, they are all also RGB, and you control those by sort of pressing a button on the top of the case, and it will sort of scroll through all the different colours. Um, I've just got it on the blue. I think it matches quite nicely. Um, and then also you can control the motherboard lighting and the RAM lighting, and you do that using the... Um, MSI Mystic Light RGB software. Uh, that's the one I've chosen to use as it is like an MSI motherboard. The RAM also does have its own software if you want some more sort of like fancy uh, rainbow effects, uh, but I do quite like the blue. So yeah, lots of RGB lighting going on. Unfortunately, the downside is that you have to control it three different ways. It doesn't all sort of synchronize and work together. Like the fans are controlled individually, the uh, LED strips you have to control using a remote, and then the motherboard and the RAM you do have to control using different software. So it is a little bit sort of like a pain, but once you've got it all set up, it does look really, really nice. 
Cyberpower seem to have done a pretty good job of matching the sort of overall colour scheme going on inside this case. Uh, so most of the parts are sort of like black and chrome that looks really smart and I think it will sort of uh, go quite well with any sort of RGB lighting or uh, colour you choose. The only odd thing is that the RAM is like a bright red but you don't really notice it too much so it hasn't really been a problem for me. Um, it just does sort of stand out as being different to the rest of the components. Uh, so I have also done a really good job with the overall cable management so yeah everything's sort of cable tied neatly into place uh, the front of the case looks really nice the only real way I think they can improve that is maybe if it had uh, like custom braided cables uh, I think you can actually add that on their website but of course that does come as like an extra premium it isn't included um, in the price of the spec uh, that I've been sent to a review anyway um, but yeah the overall cable management is very good um, also when it comes to the water cooling, uh, so obviously my sample has actually got the clear distilled water and when I opened the box I was actually a little bit disappointed uh, because I was like, oh, cyber power, can you send me something a little bit more exciting? Uh, but I did talk to them and they've told me that you can actually configure on their website, you can configure to have different colours. Uh, so they've got a few different sort of liquids to choose between uh, basically any colour you could want really. It's like green, orange, yellow, blue, purple, uh, white and etc um, but unfortunately it does come as a little bit of a premium you do have to pay a little bit extra to get that um, but overall I do think that this uh, PC looks very very nice it's definitely very good to look at um, not just because it's got the liquid cooling the overall colour scheme and cable management um, and the choice of case is quite nice as well. So now I'm going to move on to talking about all the components in a little bit more detail individually. So uh, they're obviously all very high-end, uh, very up-to-date components. The i7 8700K and the GTX 1080 Ti are sort of like top-end, plenty for gaming, uh, etc. and like beyond. Uh, the i7 8700K does come overclocked to 4.8 GHz by default from CyberPower when you purchase this specification. Um, it is a pretty good clock. I reckon you could maybe squeeze a little bit more performance out of it if you're lucky and you sort of know what you're doing uh, with clock speeds and voltages, etc. I know some people have managed to get up to sort of like 5 gigahertz and uh, beyond with that particular CPU, especially on water as well. Uh, the GTX 1080 Ti unfortunately doesn't actually come overclocked by default from CyberPower, you will have to do it yourself, uh, but there is plenty of space to get an overclock as of course it is uh, water cooled. It should be pretty straightforward though, just uh, download something like MSI Afterburner and play around with um, the clock speeds and voltages and I think you should be able to get a pretty good overclock. Uh, the RAM, there's 16 gigabytes of it, so that's plenty for sort of gaming, um, bit of video editing, bit of photo editing, etc. Um, if you obviously not enough if you're gonna be doing like intensive video editing, you're gonna want something like 32 gigs, uh, but that should be plenty for most people. The speed 3600 megahertz is obviously very fast RAM, and also because it is that ADATA XPG Spectrix water cooled RAM, um, it's also very overclockable. I think there's no real reason that RAM would be water cooled unless you're going to overclock it. Uh, so you should be able to get sort of like 4000 megahertz out of it if you want to play around uh, with the clock speeds. Uh, when it comes to storage, so it's got a 500 gigabyte uh, 970 EVO M.2 SSD from Samsung. Um, I think it's very recently released. I think it probably came out in April off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, very new uh, M.2 SSD, very fast. You can see the crystal disk mark scores here. And then it's also got the two terabyte hard drive in there as well. So there's enough storage for sort of games and programs and things. You're not just limited to the 500 gigabytes. The power supply in this PC is the RM750X from Corsair. It's gold rated, it's fully modular as well, and it also scored very highly when my colleague reviewed it when it came out. Um, I do test the power power consumption to make sure that the 750 watts is a good option for this PC and at maximum power draw it drawed uh, 454 watts um, so yeah that's basically means that the 750 watt power supply is a good choice because power supplies are most efficient between 40 and 60 percent load so that basically means that it's not going to be creating too much heat and noise etc even when you are having a hardcore gaming session. The water cooling loop is all made up of EK components and I must admit the water cooling is something that I am not the most knowledgeable about. Uh, it's something I'm still trying to learn, I'm still try trying to sort of learn how to review. So when this PC did arrive I did sort of get on the phone to Leo like, Leo can you help me out here? <laughs> um, and yeah he sort of taught me through what to look for and basically it's just a really good loop. 
wrapper. It's got a 360 millimeter radiator in the front of the case. And uh, the three fans are those SP120 fans from Corsair, which are high pressure fans to push plenty of air through the radiator. It's also got a sort of plain black fan at the back. And the way the fins are, it's sort of a high airflow fan. So that's basically what you want. Uh, it's got a combined reservoir and pump from EK that's obviously got the RGB lighting um, and then it goes round into the GPU, into the CPU and back round into the radiator. Uh, the blocks themselves are clear sort of... Um, acrylic and they've got really nice RGB lighting as well. Uh, the fact that they are clear will probably make it a bit easier to diagnose any issues. So if you notice there's any corrosion or cracks and things, uh, you can basically see what's going on in the blocks themselves and also they just sort of look pretty as well. Um, all the tubes have got really nice sort of bends in them, everything's straight, everything goes in and out where it should do. Um, they've got really nice sort of chrome fittings. It's basically just a really good loop. Um, and as you'll find out in a bit as well, it keeps everything nice and cool. As with all my reviews here at Kitgu, I put this PC to the test with uh, plenty of performance testing. Make sure to head over to the Kitgu website to get the full information, all the graphs, all the screenshots, all the text. Uh, yeah, make sure to head over to the Kitgu website after you watch the video just to get the full load of information. Um, as I don't want to bore you too much with loads of graphs and loads of talking in this video because you'll just fall off to sleep. <laughs> uh, but I'll start off with the cooling and noise performance. Uh, so to test the cooling performance around ADA 64 and Unigen for 10 minutes simultaneously to test the GPU and the CPU at the same time. I also keep an eye on the temperatures as well while I'm doing the games testing to make sure that those uh, ADA 64 temperatures are sort of like representative of how hot this PC can get. Um, unsurprisingly though, the idle temperatures are very good. It's water cooling loop, everything stays at 30 degrees. Um, the uh, CPU and GPU, yeah, both very cool, only a few degrees above idle temperatures, basically. Um, under low, the CPU does actually get up to 88 degrees, which isn't actually a surprise because um, even though it does sound a little bit hot, you can basically blame intel for that um it's why it's such a popular cpu to delid basically um i can tell the water cooling loop is doing the job correctly though because the gpu only gets up to 51 degrees which i was just like how can that be right because it's so uh cool i basically put it to the test i sort of threw everything at it like 3d mark uh, msi combustor and um, but yeah it doesn't really get above 51 degrees so gpu stays nice and cool and there's obviously plenty of room for an overclock when it comes to fan noise, uh, this PC definitely has some noise going on. Um, I don't think it's too much of a problem. Um, it's just sort of average, basically. It's not a quiet PC. It's not a loud PC. It's just it has some noise. Um, the idle, idle uh, fan noise is about 40 decibels. And then when it's under load, it only gets up to like 43 decibels. Uh, so there's basically nothing in it. Um, I think if you are someone that uses a headset, the fan noise won't really be a problem. I just think it's that those SP120 fans are just a bit noisier by default. The Cinebench score is very impressive, as you would expect. It pretty much uh, smashed it, that overclocked i7 A700K. Uh, only got beat out by an overclocker's PC that's clocked up to 4.9 gigahertz. Uh, but I'm pretty sure you could push the CPU up to uh, 4.95 uh, if you wanted to do it manually. Uh, the 3D Mark scores also, it basically smashed it. Um, very high in components, so in the individual results test, um, it scored well above the minimum specification for like a 4k gaming pc um, and it also basically scored within like the top 10 percent of results on 3d mark which is obviously quite impressive uh, the individual scores basically show that the cpu and gpu are a well-matched pair they're both top of the range so <laughs> you wouldn't really expect much else um, the benchmarks are pretty much as expected both really really good results um, but of course Benchmarks don't tell everything, so we also do games testing. So my three uh, intensive tester games are Far Cry 5, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, and also Rise of the Tomb Raider. And I tested those at three different different resolutions and also at two different graphic settings as well. So lots of testing for me, but it gives you plenty of data to look through. It means uh, for those of you that might use different monitors and things as well. So uh, 1080p resolution, obviously this PC absolutely smashed it. Um, even though those are like very demanding AAA games, it does extremely well. Um, 1440p seemed to be the real sweet spot between uh, high FPS and high uh, graphics settings, basically. Um, 
yeah, you're gonna get like above 100 FPS even in those like uh, demanding titles and in games like CSGO you're just gonna yeah it's gonna be off the scale easy play them 1440p. Uh, 4k gaming unfortunately at the moment it's still even though this is a really high end PC you're still not gonna get like 60 FPS all of the time. Um, obviously some like particularly Tom Clancy's uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands the ultra settings like really really test the graphics card um, and you're looking more between like 40 to 60 uh, FPS it definitely struggles at 4k um but i mean yeah the, you, this is a top end pc <laughs> uh, of course you can play in 4k though i mean i'm quite happy to play at 4k 60 fps you're just not going to get much above that um although if you're going to be playing less demanding titles you probably will uh, it's just the way it works unfortunately uh, but yeah very good for gaming uh, very high-end benchmark results uh, pretty much as expected perfect for gaming and beyond basically Overall, I do really like the Hyperliquid GTX from CyberPower. It's got some very high quality components and a very attractive case, and there's also plenty of RGB lighting going on. Thanks to that water cooling leak from EK, everything stays nice and cool. And I definitely think it's a PC for those of you that might want to experiment with overclocking, as even though that CPU does come with a nice overclock, you're sort of missing out on an overclock on the GPU and the RAM. I definitely think you could get a little bit of extra performance if you're someone that wants to play around with like clock speeds and voltages and basically make the most of the really nice water cooling leak. The only real downside to this PC is that those SP120 fans are a little bit on the noisy side, but I don't really think they're going to be a problem if you're someone that likes to wear a headset. The overall pricing is also quite reasonable. Um, you obviously do pay a little bit of a premium, uh, but I think because it does have a hard line uh, custom loop, uh, the cable management is also really good, and also you've got an overclock on that CPU. Obviously it takes CyberPower a bit of extra time and effort to put the PC together, and you also get a warranty and things as well. So I think a 10, 20% markup um, isn't too bad. Uh, so overall I would definitely recommend this PC for someone who wants to game, stream, video, edit it and beyond basically. Um, yeah it's a very good PC, I definitely like it. If you like this video from KitGuru make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from KitGuru make sure to hit the subscribe button and remember to head over to the KitGuru website to check out the full review of lots of graphs, writing and pictures etc.